In this video, we're going to be discussing the change process for components in the 3D Experience platform. So the app that I've got open here is called the Collaborative Lifecycle, and this shows the maturity of the objects I'm looking at. Every object in the platform has this maturity associated with it, and the life cycle of each component as a result can be adjusted and moved around. So at the moment we're looking at the subject down here. It's at revision D. You can see that it's in work and all its previous revisions are released. So the in work state is when an object is still being edited or modified. Frozen could be when it's being in the process of being approved. And obviously no modifications can be made when it's in this frozen state. However, it can still be moved back to the in work state. Once it moves from frozen to being released, it means that that object is, no, is now either being sent off to be manufactured and therefore no modifications can be made to it unless it gets revised. And that can be done at the bottom here where a new revision can be created as well as duplicates. So in this video, I'm going to be speaking about three different ways that we can release components, each increasing in their complexity depending on what is required. So for this example, I'm just going to use the straight release button, assuming that I know what work has been done on this component. And so to release it, I literally just click the release button there. And then the component is moved to the release state. You can see that it gets updated there. And that traceability is updated on this component. So it is known when it was released. And as you can see, I've got no meth option of moving it back in the cycle to be either frozen or in work. The other method which increases in complexity is what we call a change action. A change action is a vehicle that can be used to release components or release documents and essentially you can use it to tag other people along and get them to either approve the component that needs to be released um, review it and release it, etc. So to create a change action, click here. Add a description. We can add some a different severity and a due date. Well, once that's been created, we can open it up and have a look at some of the details here. So there's various details that come along telling me the creation date, when it's due, the severity. So the first, me first method for, sorry, the second method now that we're referring to whilst using a, a change action to release components is that you can assign members to the change action. So here we can add as many members as we like. I can either add them as assignees so that they are informed that there's action that is required by them to, to make the modification to the component. I can also add an approver and this person will be the, the last stop basically. They will need to approve whatever change has been made and then when they promote the change action it will release the component. I can also add an informed user who is just informed of this process as it goes from one stage to the next. Importantly, we obviously need to add the component that we're wanting to, to release. So you can click and drag, sorry, drag and drop into this area here into what we call a proposed change. Or I can just add it from here, which will conduct a search for me. And I'm just going to add a physical product. We'll grab something from down here. I can click and drag and also drop that in there. So that adds that component there, it tells me that the operation I'm going to apply is a modification to that component. I can put the reason for changes, thickness, to them. And over here the activity is that it will be released. So when this change action has been promoted to the approval stage and eventually, released, and eventually approved by the approver, it will release this component that I've added now as a proposed change. 
I can also add referentials. So if I wanted to add a photo or a markup, as I might have referred to in the previous video, those can also be added to the change action here, all just giving the approver more material to refer to when they are trying to approve this change action and release the component. Now, the third method, if this isn't enough complexity that you only have, say, for example, one approver, is you can create a root. Now, a root, in this case, can either be simple, as I've explained before, where we've just got one approver, or it can be extremely complex, where we've got various stages of people where there are three different people that could approve it, that moves it to the next stage. In this case, there's two people, and this could be different headline managers, line managers, or uh, chief designers that need to approve and eventually release the, the component. So these stages, I mean, this is all customizable on on the 3 d platform. It doesn't require any, any particular customizations to implement. So those are the three methods for releasing your components on the 3 d platform.